super stellar. Those arrows connected when they needed to connect. He hit every single arrow, basically. I don't think he missed a single one. No, uh, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to say that. That's mean to another region there. Uh, but he landed all of them. No whiffed arrows at all. The other person I would have given it to, as I very much called out in the game, would be Chicken. There were so many times that MJ and Sa and everyone else was kept alive purely due yeah. to the incredible face melts from Chicken. I think so too. I think Chicken played out of his mind in that game. Not only did he peel for the backline very well, but also his timing on the stage dive and the uh, prediction moves on the stage dive as well uh, were just spot on here. He always connected on the target he needed to connect. And with stage dive, that is not always an easy thing to do because it has an activation timer and then it takes a couple of seconds to drop down where you want to drop down. So uh, predicting where the target is going to be at in that specific moment in time uh, requires uh, quite a lot of skills. So well done, Chicken. Well done, Saw. Well done, RPG. And they're actually going to be the ones who picked Tomb of the Spider Queen. So we're going to stay in the desert. We're going to stay um, in our tropical uh, environment. Although I don't think the caverns are actually that uh, tropical here. It's rather, I can say, moist and dark and gloomy. Possibly. Um, I think I just worked out the map system. Go ahead. Enlighten me. I think the idea is it's a continued series because they didn't, they haven't picked either of the duplicate maps. They haven't ah, made, so they haven't shown any kind of difference. Wait I can't remember any of the matches previously where they have duplicated. So basically you're saying that these four maps are now not allowed anymore and they're forced onto so. different battlegrounds? That would be amazing, actually. I think that's the case. I mean, yeah. that's the only, that's what my brain is saying. Yeah, that ah. would make sense. So that, of course, forces more map diversity, which could actually have been another reason why we saw Braxis yesterday. I think we've rumbled it, potentially, but we will confirm this. We will confirm it later. Really this cool. is just like a it. theory. A map theory, uh, as we see Garrosh and Junkrat banned out, which leaves Medivh open for RPG, potentially. All right, yeah, that uh, leaves Medivh open. It's definitely one of the better Medivh maps. The question is, has Sunny Line actually prepared Medivh? Have they practiced with it? Because I don't think we've ever seen them on this here. I could be wrong, though, but uh, it's definitely not like they played it multiple times because that would definitely stuck in our memories. Uh, for now, I think this trophy or this trademark goes over to teams like CE, uh, even SPT yeah. to a certain extent, who uh, have practiced the Medivh rigorously over the last few weeks. Starting off with the Hanzo. Going straight in there. He is the most popular, basically. All right. So we see the Hanzo go for Sunny Lion this time around. No Sa Hanzo. Sa, actually one of those uh, players that is very often put on the Hanzo. Seems to be one of his most comfortable heroes. So uh, what is RPG going to respond with? You know what? I wouldn't mind a Medivh. Just play it safe here, RPG. Play to your strengths. And uh, don't throw away this lead that you have so that you have worked so hard for. Like basically RPG, similar, similarly to yesterday, uh, where they also took a 1-0 lead, they just must not throw it away. They need to bring home the 2-0 this time, especially against Sunny Lion, right? A team that is quite close in the bottom half of the table uh, to them. Correct. So if they get a 2-0 in and KT doesn't win today, for example, uh, that could be a nice pounce, a nice move for RPG. There is a two-point difference between the two teams. RPG winning one already makes it at minimum uh, currently a three-point difference, as we do see that Medivh coming in and the Stukov. Um, but Sunny Lion, they, if they win, they'll still be two points behind RPG, but that's a recoverable deficit there, and then they just have to hope that Soa and every other team that plays against them will take out KT as they're the next lowest, and that will be both of their targets to move out of that bottom do and overtake the other one as well. Sunny Lion, they need a win to stay in contestion and try and avoid that demotion spot. However, they're playing better than they were earlier. I think they would have a potentially decent chance in any kind of demotion crucible match. By the way, what is your uh, latency? Just a quick answer. Oh, um... So we make sure that we're on the same page. Ooh, I buffered when I wasn't looking. Um, 1137. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to uh, quickly pause and pause. So uh, I think yeah. we're going to be a little closer to each other again. Currently sitting at 5.6, close to 6. 6.5. Uh, you know I I'm go not going to get slower. If I get slower, I'll buffer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can get uh, higher. So now I'm sitting at 6 flat. Six will do. 
that's okay. half a second. Half a second is our is our base. That As we see good. EGC and Utha coming in, the holy cow. Unfortunately, we uh for obvious reasons did not get to see uh um, the the currently name pending Ahimsa combo. Uh, <laughs> so, but instead, we may now see the holy cow. Yep, and they take away the Jaina as well. Although, if that is actually still necessary, I am not 100% sure of. I guess they're just afraid of the Jaina burst in general. Jaina, of course, could be one of those heroes that really messes up uh, any Stuka, uh, sorry, any Medivh portal. For example, if she drops the Blizzard um, next to one of those entrances, that could really mean that um, people do not want to uh, walk through the portals anymore, preventing, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, good engages or disengages. So... Yeah, I, I guess it makes sense to ban that, especially with the ETC Mosh Pit, Ring of Frost combos. Uh, the Hanzo Dragon's error could also be very scary for that reason. So, uh, you know, better be safe than sorry. Um, now, with Jaina, the player on Sunny Lion's side, not really playing ranged assassin anymore, I don't think there is an immediate Jaina threat of the hero. So, um, yeah, maybe... I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that Jaina ban, I think. It makes sense somewhere, somehow, but... Uh, I probably wouldn't have picked it. I would have gone for a Genji gank, maybe because Wildlight on that hero um, has been doing quite well in the last game. I, yes, I would agree with this. He was really good, only being shut down once the entire game, and that hero is removed. So that is a pretty decent scenario to find yourself in. So now, what is the next uh, next pickup for RPG? They still need a tank, they still need damage. That they do, quite right. So, uh, what is going to be their response to this? Now, to be honest, Wave Clear is still a thing, especially on Tomb of Spider Queen. So, uh, them going for something like Gul'dan could help them out. Maybe a Johanna. Johanna could also be a uh, formidable counter to the ETC. But, Tetcher, if there's one thing we have to be aware of, try to avoid going for a solo. Johanna and maybe go for a Diablo instead. How could we forget about the Lord of Terror? You know, uh, going for the combo potentially with Leila and Seal Apocalypse. We all know that by now. And of course, there's many globes to be had on Tomb of the Spider Queen, yeah. Tetra, and as such, Diablo is going to be very, very tanky. Yeah, Devil's Jew halfway through a fight basically ends that fight. So that is really, really mm -hmm. good. And. It is going to be uh, interesting to see how well Diablo can move in against the uh, Uther. Uther's going to have his work cut out for him, especially considering portals yep. will be a consistent assistant to, uh, which is a fate, one of my new favorite runs on the spot, um, to Diablo with his Shadow Charge. Popping through a portal can it make it so that he always gets that wall angle. Yeah, and wall angle, uh, that is going to be the key word here. Uh, we're definitely going to look for... A couple of lockdowns here, a couple of uh, slams into walls, into apocalypses, into uh, Leyland Seal. Of course, Leyland Seal should be uh, used first. Otherwise, you whiff the combo for the most part. And Mayev goes in plus Zeratul. Now, this is a very aggressive response to what RPG has deployed. And a very bold one at that as well. Because when you face Stuka of Medivh, the enemy team has so much disengaged, they have so much protection as well. Even the fear, the horrifier on top of it. So uh, more melee assassins putting or getting put into the draft by Sunny Line is a quite audacious move. But if it works with a Warden's Cage, with a VP, then there is a lot of damage and killing potential here onto heroes like Gul'dan, for example. Now RPG with the final pick. You've made me reconsider how my own pronunciation of a word there because yours made sense. Which one? Um, audacious. There we go. Because it's audacity, whereas I always thought it was pronounced audacious. <laughs> um, but yours makes sense, so I'm going to have to look that up at another date as we wait to see the final pick. And it's, they could, like we said, go another more sustained damage dealer, but they need someone who can survive the Zeratul, so I think a solo laner like uh, like Sonya or like Malthael oh, could be a reason. Then Varian sort of bid fits in that gap. Even with Torn builds, he's still pretty high on the burst damage count. So I'll take that. That's decent. And uh, yeah, I was going to say for a moment, I was very hyped to see Timeless on that variant, but they swapped heroes in the last second here. <laughs> because Timeless on the variant could have actually involved potential shenanigans on maybe a Twin Blade or a Colossus. But uh, with Chicken now on the hero, of course, we're probably going to see uh, the good old taunt come back into the fray. And Timeless, is he going to play the Gul'dan? I didn't even see um, which hero he was uh, receiving on the end there on the tiny screen. But pr it's probably going to be uh, the Gul'dan or maybe even the Medivh. 
Huh. I would I would say probably Saw for the Medivh. True, I, he I played guess. it the other days as well. Yeah, you're, you're right. So yeah, Timer School Dan, C Diablo, and then MJ Stokov would be my my initial mental breakdown. Right. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't hate it. I definitely wouldn't hate it. Now, I'm a little bit concerned for the overall killing potential, the overall damage output on the side of RPG with that variant pick. I think Diablo by himself was enough of frontline already. Maybe they could have gone for yet another assassin. Uh, maybe they could have gone for a melee assassin at that, which would also provide a little bit of frontlining. But Varian, of course, has been one of those heroes that did get quite good results as of late, um, especially with a taunt build and especially with uh, the increased self-sustain. He's quite hard to take down. Like, a lot of people were saying, you know what, his health pool is so low now, his scaling is even worse than before, he's going to be, uh, you know, thrown from side to side by the enemy team, he's going to get manhandled all the time, but not really much of that has happened. In fact, he's oftentimes more resilient than before. Anyways, guys, we're now going to take a look at RPG's roster once more. The chicken on the variant. MJ is playing Stukov. Sa, as we said, on that Medivh. C is playing Diablo and Timeless on Gul'dan. Are we good or what? On the right-hand side, it is going to be Sunny Lion. And Pow is playing the Uther. Jade on ETC. Feed B on Hanzo. Wylight on the Maev. And First is playing the Zeratul. All right. A solo tank. Double melee assassin composition here for... Uh, Sunny Line, is that going to be enough, though, to bring down RPG, who have exceptional protection here with Mediv, with Stukov, and even to a certain extent, uh, you know, Timeless on the Gul'dan, dropping the Horrify as a last resort when it comes to keeping enemy members uh, at bay here. The first Corruption, unfortunately, whiffing. Uh, Echo Corruption, of course, being uh, the ability to go for here. Now, Varian does not yet have Shield Wall, but he doesn't need to because there's a Mediv in the fray. Portals are being used very well, and the first blood goes over to RPG already. Oh, a clutch blink by first there as the Abra tries to charge to him. Right as the charge hits as well, so C doesn't even follow him over the wall. Gives him the easy escape there. Lions more, I'm pretty sure, was just able to achieve a nice cheeky stack as well, mm -hmm. so good start. This is the talent we're going for, so we're likely going to end up seeing the Lion hard, but would not, this would be the worst map to even see Victory Rush on. Yeah, to be honest, uh, Victory Rush is an option. Um, if you are confident in uh, consistently attacking uh, all the time, you could even consider Second Wind. Like, that's the cool thing about Variant's rework. Um, at level 7, for example, he does not really have a bad talent per se. All three talents were seen in Pro Play um, in Open Division or the Pro Division. So, uh, yeah, let's see what it is. Lion's Maw, of course, being a little bit stronger when it comes to wave clearing, right? The damage increase by Lion's Fang is definitely going to be noticeable at the end if fully stacked. So uh, that could be one of the reasons why they chose it. And of course, you know, keeping those melee assassins slowed for a longer duration of time after completing it is also a nice thing to have, especially for Gul'dan, especially to slow them down even further, only to, um, you know, chase them down with the portal as well. So already, look at the rotation by RPG going for that bottom mercenary camp with four members. And Varian, like you said, with the, uh, with the option of the Lionheart, it gives him a lot more range to stay. And in the battle of uh, Monsters and Men here, he is going to have a solid chance there yeah. with the Lionheart being the High King himself. That was a okay. complicated reference as we see the portal <laughs> used to get everyone out of, out of range. Yeah, that was a nice disengage here, although ETC dropped very low. I think RPG realized that they, A, won't have the killing potential to really bring him down altogether, and B, they also needed to defend this night camp, which Sunny Line had taken in the meantime. So both teams now taking care of uh, the mercenaries and trying to keep their lanes safe and sound. Look at the Stuka preventing the push and actually interrupting Feet B as well, who was charging up the storm bow you need to be very careful here see just just missing the angle uh pushing feed B through the route there as opposed to into the wall just to his left it was very close a uh, yeah. matter of pixels there now Varian of course has the ability to taunt his enemies so uh first all of a sudden needs to be very careful in how he positions himself in the lane in the meantime Stuka, uh silencing uh, ETC to great effect timers needs to be careful takes a lot of damage from uh, the Maiev fan of knives over and over again level four he does yeah. have access to uh, consume soul right so whenever there's minions nearby he can consume one of them to gain a significant amount of health back Nice's memento was also being used in that fight, which is a big reason why Tannis was taking so much damage due to standing directly behind his ally. 
uh, and they do try to raise some more damage there to stun the Teva, but the nice silence taunt preventing Teva going off and allowing Timeless to try and push them forward, but a nice span of knives to the face will prevent that going any further. Yep, that was a really good save by Sa, and you can really see how Sa and Medivh is uh, helping his members in need whenever you need them, um, and that's of course another big advantage of having Medivh on Tomb of the Spider Queen in particular, because the distance between those lanes is so short that you're always going to be there in time, whereas on other larger maps like let's say Cursed Hollow or Warhead Junction, although Warhead Junction is not really in the map really anymore, uh, you would take much longer to even get there as such the um, win celerity at level 1 is oftentimes a talent nowadays uh, being picked much more frequently for exactly that reason, you want to be at your ally's side in time, especially on larger maps. Yes, the only one I personally will accept that is a portal mastery as we see the Torn going down onto ETC, but he's pretty tanky uh, at this particular time, so he's able to turn around and move back in, rejoin his team, but full health thanks to his own healing. Took up in the meantime trying to zone out the opponents with a big lurking arm, of course, also damaging the minions and uh, wave weavers underneath. Now, ETC already, you, you can really see how he wants to get that power slide in, but he can't because of uh, MJ just being uh, stuck up. Now, this takes a little longer than I think RPG would want it, right? Uh, with the gold end, you have a formidable wave clear. There's only so much you can do if you're joined by Stukov and Chicken, who doesn't really have the strongest damage onto the Web Weaver. Now, Sa needs to be careful. I'm not sure if he's fully stacked. I don't think he is just yet, so uh, there's an onslaught by Sunny Line. The portal should be ready still, though. But already so much pressure onto this top lane. Gonna mount up even to make himself a little bit safer. The time is arriving up here, though, and Sa coming out of Raven form. This top lane will be at least surviving. Mm -hmm. uh, but down to just over half health. Now, of course, keep in mind that... Uh, RP does have enough gems in the bank to get a turn in themselves, but uh, Sunny Line has been doing a wonderful job at keeping the turn in points safe and under control. Here goes a taunt on Jaina, the silence directly underneath, and that is a sweet combo that we've seen uh, multiple times in professional play these days right now. With the Varian and the Stukov silence, we have a really good lockdown combo. Uh, when you silence the target that got taunted, there is no way that target can use their respective uh, escape mechanisms, and as such, Chicken becomes quite a default threat. But look at that, Jaina has had enough. He's going back in onto Stukov. Force Quill's good. Timeless gets pulled in and taken out. First from one side, Wilight from the other, and they're able to pick up two kills onto the two squishy members of RPG. I was going to say, the RPG got a little too brave, a little too uh, overzealous here with the way they continuously shut down or try to shut down Jaina on the ETC. True, you can do that if there is enough damage, but if you don't have enough damage, if there's only like two or three members of your team nearby, then guess what? At some point, you, uh, you have, you've had enough, right? The, you can't grab the bull by the horns too, too often without him uh, retaliating. So that's exactly what uh, Jaina did on the ETC. And as such, his teammates helped him in that regard. They got a couple of kills and now have a one-level lead. This Timeless will uh, assist in taking this camp. MJ as well being the one tanking it. But of course, MJ very solid healer and very mana efficient healer now that he has one good spread. But... With Heroics available for Sunny Lion, they do control the turn in. They just have not even close to enough gems to actually do it. Uh, no, they do, sorry. Uh, they're actually getting pretty close at this point. They need to actually turn them in. Yeah, they need, uh, they need one more right now to maybe get the turn in. And now you can actually see the gem glow. I never paid attention to it, by the way. When the gem is glowing, that yeah. means that the team has enough to turn in. I mean, I literally just found that out right now when you said it. So. Yes, me too! <laughs> <laughs> I show oh, up to the stream to be educated. I show up to the to the stream <laughs> to be educated, uh, and that is why we love you, Kendrick. As we see Pal pushing forward because she noticed these things. DBZ round two onto Timeless, uh -oh. Tether, and Timeless is time out. Going back to the Hall of the Storms. And that is, of course, the name of the game here up to this point. There's not really a whole lot RPG can do to keep Sunny Line at bay up to this point, though, because level 10 has finally arrived for them. Chicken may find himself a little bit out of position. He's trying to evacuate Varian, run to safety, run for your life. I think he's actually going to make it. Yep. Duh. Duh. Oh. Needs, to needs to try and play with vision. That's what he's doing here. He's actually out of vision. He did it. He oh. played with vision. <laughs> Oh, I so love it. smart. Look how much time he's bought. His yeah. team's just coming to Webweaver in mid lane now. It's just gone. 
That was huge. Like, uh, they basically uh, have enough time to now clear top and middle as well. Chicken with uh, a valiant effort here to really try and buy as much time as he can. Varian saving his team once again. That was really, really well done. Now the bottom lane is the only one left remaining. And even with, uh, you know, Z going for Lightning Breath, what is going on? What is happening in this series? RPG is now going for all the different heroic abilities here. We weren't even paying attention because there was so much action going down in the bottom half of the map here. So Lightning Breath, no Apocalypse with the Leyline Seal, though. I'm not sure if that was planned. Sadly, I could say this is the second wave clear lightning breath we have seen in HGC China. Uh, it, it's because there was no one else there. There were no heroes. It was just to clear the lane. Uh, this was picked in NA recently, and the fact is, lightning breath did actually win the game that that was in. Um, so maybe this is the recovery heroic that RPG needed. Quite like Life Binder. Maybe this is exactly what they needed, and C will be the one to save this game for them. Exactly. I was just going to say, you know, today in China we saw Life Binder win a game. So uh, one not do it with the lightning breath i i think if i had to you know place my bets on which heroic ability would more likely to win a game uh then i think i would definitely bet on lightning breath rather than life banner so rpg made it work in game number one and uh, they could maybe do it again in game number two but for now tetra they're quite far behind two levels uh, altogether and yet with 96 gems in the bank I mean, I, I have kind of faith in uh, in Lightning Breath. I mean, of Dragon Strike, which has this, the exact same problem of, oh, they've walked out of it, uh, can win multiple games in HGC, then why not Lightning Breath? As we see C uh -oh. move it up to say hello to Jada. Jada was spotted, uh, spotted it, though. Power sliding into the Torch Silence and the CC train from RPG is good. The yeah. Horrify, they're burning everything, but yeah. where's the damage? They can't do it. Time has been found by Zeratul. Void Prism, no protection. Timers can't even make Pitcher. it to the... I, I don't even know what to say about this. It was just wrong on so many levels, right? First of all, they used Ooh, every the single heroic ability onto ETC. They wouldn't let go. They tried so hard to make it work. Nice portal, by the way, to save Chicken with 49 gems on him. But yeah, they tried so hard multiple times on ETC, and even when he didn't even fall below 50% HP, they still pursued him. They still used every single heroic ability onto him. Now, oh, look at that, countering the Maef Tether. Um, whoop, is he going to get to portal, save? Can't portal. The portal. Uh, they all stood on it, blocked the ability to click on it. Very nicely done there by Sunny Lion. But yeah, Tetra, and then of course, the icing on the cake here, they weren't even 13. So they tried to make that happen. They tried to bring down the main tank with 12 against 15, 12 against 14. It was just uh, an endeavor that could never succeed, if you ask me. And now Diablo, of course, lost all of his uh, stacks here. He's now a tiny mini devil. As such, easy to kill, and that's exactly the target they want to focus on for now. Yeah, able to give himself a nice charge to give himself a little bit more freedom. Force of Will is used on Chicken, who did go for Shield Wall, by the way. We did not mention this, but uh, he also gets an unstoppable uh, and a protected. So there are two protectors in the game, both of which could land on Varian at True. some point or another. Yeah, Chicken, by the way, now the richest man on Tomb of the Spire Queen with 58 gems in his pockets, he's really going to have to try and pay those. Like, him alone could actually yeah. be a single oh, turn right now. There goes the Leyland Seal. They tried to lock oh, down Zero. Oh, oh. Zero. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Leyland, quick, everyone through the port. Oh, he's gone. Uh, that's just sad to see. I, I don't have any other way to describe that other than kind of sad. Yeah. As timeless, my die to my F. Nope, no one's going to chase any further. At least he completed his Echo Corruption right now, which is definitely a big power spike for Timeless. He, oh, yes. uh, oh, there we go. Chicken was actually managing to get in yet another turn, and, and uh, this could be a nice moment for RPG to relieve some of the pressure here. They try to go in oh. once again, 13 against 16. Can they make it happen? The Horrify interrupted, I'm pretty sure, there. So Timeless will have this back in 10 seconds. As the Flaming Swipe comes out, C will likely fall. There he goes nice down to a Hammer Justice. Void Prison. Mosh Pit is available. This could oh. be a Power Slide. The Face Guard doesn't even need the Mosh Pit. Pushing through as Wylight cleans up another. Two members of RPG escape for this for so much time for Sunny Lion to clean up these Web Weavers. Yeah, and you're... Completely correct, by the way, Tetra. The Horrify was interrupted the first time. It was interrupted the second time as well. So Timeless, you know, he's uh, he's going to have to wait at least a couple of team fights more until he gets that one off because now his team is all staggered across the board. Um, they can't even push with those web viewers. That's the second turn in that goes completely with. Um, and as such, you know, all three structures, all three forts for Sunny Lane are largely untouched. This is... Uh, very unsatisfying experience for RPG, let's put it this way. 
They are struggling, but they struggled from doubt, being down a keep in the last game, and they were able to claim victory. Mm -hmm. If it's it, so far, I'm yet to see their combo. Uh, I'm still not entirely sure what their plan is this game. I guess we will potentially find out as we wait and see. So, we see the Bruiser Cam and the Sea Strike Cam being posted over with the Bruiser already being taken. RPG is gone the turning point because guess what? They lost all their gems. Corn is used. Lightning Breath does nothing. almost nothing. Uh, oh. And therefore, they are forced to move back. Uh, turns out, Lightning Breath not picked for a reason. Then it's too much damage is the reason. The thing is, Tetra, like, it looks so cool, right? It's probably one of the coolest yeah. looking abilities in the game, and yet it only tickles you. It gives you a nice, uh, you know, a nice massage. It warms your back quite nicely. You know, you feel rejuvenated after it expires. And, uh, <sighs> Dibbles, I don't know, man. I don't know if he's going to be a massage therapist or the Lord of Terror in that game. I'm leaning towards the, uh, the former. Well, late game. Lightning Breath can be super crazy, but that requires them to get to late game. Yeah. The damage output it can do there is pretty reasonable, but yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, this is going to be so hard. With RPG stuck in their base again on the defense, Medivh scouting. Medivh has 25 gems, yeah. so it is his job to keep scouting. He has some appearance against Zeratul as well, so he's got his eyes on Zeratul pretty consistently. This is going to be very useful for RPG to not have timeless explode. The thing is, you, you might also ask yourself, like, if RPG played a team like SBT or CE and they would go for these uh, ability choices, they would go for these uh, hero picks and those drafts, I would be like, okay, they're just trying something new, you know, they're just trying to have fun. But against Sunny Line, a team that they need to beat because they too were struggling so hard. Nice, I glad. don't understand why they tortured themselves so much. That was a beautiful retaliation move here by Sunny Line. Are they going to get Twilight? Nope, they don't. Sixteen isn't even here. The Wet Beavers are knocking at the door. And there goes one keep. Middle is going to fall next. And even Top is mightily sieged. They're probably going to be able to save the core, though, unless they lose someone here. There's the VP, the Taunt, onto Zeratul, potentially preventing the VP cancel. The size this drop is going to allow Sar to portal himself out, but it's not going to allow Gul'dan to survive as Zeratul jumps in on him. Chicken is burst as well, and now the core will not survive. That's going to be GG, and Sunny Lion manages to achieve the draw by taking game number two. Yeah, game number two was probably one of the most one-sided games we have uh, ever seen in HCC China. From start to finish, KT, uh, sorry, Sunny Line, they looked like the better team. They looked like the team that had a plan in mind. Whereas, on the other hand, you had RPG picking Lightning Breath. I'm not. That must have been a misclick. Like as much as I'm trying to defend it, or as much as I'm trying to find value in it, I couldn't have seen it. Like. There was no reason not to go Apocalypse when you go Ley Lancey, right? It, Polybomb, maybe. Yeah. Polybomb, you could have been like, yeah, you know, they don't want to go for the combo. They don't want to execute it. Maybe they don't have the communication or the coordination. But with Ley Seal and still not going Apocalypse? Come on, bro. That's... I've, I've only seen Lightning Breath work with one combo. That's, that's my issue with this. And yeah. that was way back in the day, Virtus Pro, where it was on this map. They ran Diablo. They ran... Uh, and they ran Taranda. Mm. Uh, no, no, it was Tassadar. Uh, where literally it was just Tassadar with everything on slow, just all, everything that can slow enemies as much as possible, and force wall. So just tackle enemies into the force wall and then lightning breath them while Tassadar just keeps them slowed inside the lightning breath. That was very effective because, of course, yeah. you got the burst damage from the charge and then the lightning breath got the full duration. That was also back in the day that armor wasn't really a thing. So it was quite effective then as well. And it was before it got nerfed. So, yeah, slight issue. The thing is, if, if they had had some of the heroes that a Sunny Lion had in their roster, right? Let's say a VP, but even then Apocalypse gets so much more value. But let's say the Warden's Cage. You know, they can't run away from the Lightning Breath. They're going to get roasted in a, in a circle barbecue quite nicely. But... Yeah. Uh, that is about it, right? That is the only scenario in which I can say, you know, maybe there was a plan behind it. Maybe they wanted to execute it in this way or fashion. But uh, the way RPG played it, unfortunately, also with the Gul'dan solo ranged assassin with Medivh in the mix, with Varian in the mix, um, you basically had warriors that excel at locking people down. 
and then you don't go for burst follow-up damage. Like, you don't go for a Greymane, for example, no Genji. Greymane, in my opinion, could have totally been picked instead of the Varian, and then you probably would have had a, a stronger solo lane. You would have had more killing potential altogether. Um, so, yeah, maybe they wanted a little too much. Maybe mm. they weren't on the same page in terms of how they wanted to design that draft. I think in this game, you basically can put it onto Timeless, um, unless he was the I one defending the Gul'dan pick. Yeah, because I'm going to say, I, I like the Varian pick. I think the single target blow up style they could have had would have been really insane. Mm. Uh, but if then they would have lacked Wave Clear too. Blew up instead of, okay, we have the blocks down. Cool down, go! Corruption. <laughs> uh, Wait, now let me channel. Now I'm not, we play not ready the yet. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> 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 it's a question of, yes, I've dropped all my damage. They might die if they don't That's get healed boy. in a couple seconds. That's the issue with Gul'dan. You don't get that instant blow up, which yeah. is the kind of thing you need when you have that Varian Diablo combo. Exactly, but there are other mages who could have done it, right? There was a Jaina. Jaina? They banned it themselves. Was, yeah. uh, <laughs> they banned it themselves. Even, yeah, even a Kalthas has more burst damage. A Chromie as well. You could have done that. Um, yeah. I mean, Kel'Thuz would have also had potentially had a better time surviving Zeratul. Kel'Thuzad would not. I would not have liked Kel'Thuzad. Uh, yeah. He would have been detonated. Chromie is the best choice, in my opinion, now that you've mentioned it. That would have been... Uh, being able to pick time out in that late game would have made it a lot safer and prevented the kind of uh, Maya all-in style against it, at least a little bit. Yeah, very true. Anywho, we could probably continue to Lee talk May about this game and uh, what went wrong for RPG for many, many more minutes to come. But you know what, guys? We're going to be a little lazier. We're going to put that into the hands of our Chinese replay analyst, which uh, most likely should be uh, Nostali with uh, Nova now sitting on the desk. And uh, yeah. I don't think anyone else has been doing it up to this point, only the two of them. So it's probably going to be Nostali. Although I wouldn't mind, let's say, Yaya or Q doing this. Yeah, want to see the want to see the variation? I mean, I would like to see Genshuo doing it personally, being the <sighs> ex actually pro player for KMT back yeah. in the day. But he, of course, is sitting right next to uh, Nova here at the moment. Yeah, so uh, he's busy. Ah, oh, those were the days, by the way, with Genjo on the left-hand side here. You